Hi everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we will be completing in today's video. This fun gazelle drawing where he's in a little safari area with these fun safari trees and this fun safari color palette. So this is a super simple beginner friendly tutorial. If you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials. So if that is something you are interested in, go ahead and subscribe. I also offer extra tutorials over on Patreon if you want to check that out. I have that linked in the description below. Before we get started, the only thing that you will need to do is download the color palette. I have it linked in the description below. It's totally free to download. Just open up the file that downloads and it will automatically pop into Procreate so that you can use the same colors as you follow along with the video today. I will also post the canvas dimensions, color profile, and layers needed on the screen and in the description below so that you can use those to set up your canvas. So take a minute to get everything ready and then come back and we will get started. Okay, this is the color palette that we will be working with today. So let's just go ahead and get started. We're first going to make the background sky. It's going to be a gradient. It's going to be a little darker on the top and then fade out into a little bit lighter towards the bottom. So that's gonna be our first three colors on the color palette. So let's just go ahead and make sure we're on layer one here. Let's grab our first color on the first row and drag and drop it to fill the entire canvas with this darker blue. Then we'll grab our second color on the top row, grab our selection tool, set it to rectangle with color fill turned on. And we're just going to start on the bottom left outside of our canvas and drag and draw to cover the top like, or the bottom like three quarters of the canvas. So there's just about a quarter of our dark color on the top. Let that go to fill that in. Click our selection tool to turn it off. Grab our next color, the third one on the top row, and we'll do the same thing again. Selection tool, rectangle and color fill turned on. Start on the bottom left outside, and we'll cover the bottom half or a little over halfway maybe, like so. Selection tool to turn that off again. So now you should have three colors like this. Because we mostly want the gradient to just be at the top here. The bottom is going to be covered with all of our ground pieces. So we kind of just are focusing on the top section here. So then to get our gradient blur from top to bottom, we'll go to our wand icon, click Gaussian Blur, and we'll drag this up a good ways to maybe like 50%. And now it's very nice and blurred together there. Okay, moving right along, we're gonna make a, lay down our ground pieces now. So we're going to go to our layer menu, add a new layer above this layer. Grab the first color on the second row of the color palette. And we are going to grab our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. We'll set it to 50%. And I am just going to make a kind of slanted line starting about halfway, maybe a little bit lower than halfway on the left side. A slanted line up and to the right, just a little bit, nothing too crazy, like the tiniest little bit. So now we're like about halfway on the right side, a little lower than halfway on the left side. Hold it down until it turns perfectly straight. And then you can adjust it a little bit if you need to. So maybe right about there. Once you let your line go, you can still adjust it more by clicking this line button at the top. And then it will still let you adjust it a little bit more if you need to. And then let's go ahead and fill in the bottom of this. Okay. Now we're going to stay on the same layer and we're just gonna do this again. So let's grab our second color on the second row. Then starting a little bit lower on the left side here now, I'm just gonna drag and draw across the screen again, make a slightly different angle this time. So maybe like pretty much straight across, but I'm not like touching my fingers to the screen or anything. You can if you want to, to get like a perfectly horizontal line. But I'm just going to kind of eyeball it so it's not super perfect. Again, adjust it if you need to. And then let's go ahead and fill in below it. So drag and draw to fill your color in. Hopefully it only fills in the bottom section. If it overfills your line like this, all you need to do is undo the color fill. Drag and drop it again. Hold your pen on the screen this time and just drag it to the left a little bit to lower the threshold there so it just fills in the bottom section. Okay, and then we're going to do that one more time with our third color on the second row now. 
we are going to start again a little bit lower than our previous section. Maybe make a different angle this time. I'm going to go down and to the right. Hold it down. Adjust it if you need to. I might make it a little sharper so there's more of my back, my previous color showing. And then again, drag and drop to fill in below it and make sure it only fills in that section there. Okay, that looks great so far. Now we're going to add the clouds in the background. So let's go ahead and go to our layer menu, find our previous blue layer, add a layer right above that. So we're above our blue layer, below our ground layers that we just laid down. Grab our fifth color on the second row of our color palette. Same monoline brush at 50% and we are just going to draw some clouds back here. Two big like billowing clouds close to the horizon. So I'm going to start roughly in the middle, a little bit to the right of the middle perhaps, vertically here, right where my yellow starts, right underneath it a little bit to cut it off. I'm just going to start there. I'm going to make some curved lines. You can hold them down if you want to to get perfectly curved lines. But I'm just going to kind of make them in different directions until we go off the screen on the right side. Then I'm going to just try to connect it to the edge on the bottom here. So kind of right where my line ends here, just going to draw there either under my yellow or right next to it so that there's no gap where there's any blue showing. And then we can fill that in. And we'll do the same thing on the left side here. So I'll maybe leave a little gap and then we'll kind of start my left cloud. I have it go a little higher on the side. Maybe not quite that high. Like so. And then again, draw across the bottom to connect to the side of the canvas to this first point that we made and fill that in. Okay, so there's our two clouds, but now we will go ahead and move on. So now we're going to go ahead and add our tree. So we're going to make one big tree in the front, then we're going to copy it for our back tree in the back and kind of like lower the saturation and stuff so it looks further away. So we're going to make our main tree though on the front kind of right side here. So let's go ahead and just jump to our first tree color, which is the first one on the last row of the color palette. Go to our layer menu, add a new layer above everything. Same brush at 50%. Okay, and to get our tree pieces, we're first going to make a straight horizontal line for the bottom of like our big top tree piece here. So I'm gonna start kind of just right in here Make a nice good horizontal line with plenty of room above it. So make a line, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen to make it perfectly horizontal. I'll maybe extend it about this long. Okay, then similarly to our clouds, we're going to start on one end here. Make a nice curved line, hold it down until it turns perfectly smooth. Then you can edit the arc button at the top if you need to. I made mine a little too high maybe, so I'll adjust it down a little bit. And then just make sure it meets up nicely on the left side here. Okay, then our pen tool again, I'll make another curved line to the other side. Hold it down as well. Adjust it if necessary. I may make it a little smaller. And then fill this in. So this is like the first piece of our tree. I might make the whole thing a little bit bigger. So on my, with my arrow tool on uniform, I might just make the whole thing a little bit bigger like so. We can do more adjusting in a moment if we need to, but let's make now, so this is actually going to be the back piece of our top tree part, so the back part is darker. Then we're going to go to our layer menu, add a new layer. This is where we're going to draw the top lighter piece of this piece of the tree. So let's switch to our second color on the bottom row, but we only want to draw within this tree shape here that we already laid down. But we, also, but we can't set it to a clipping mask because we need to draw the trunk in between the two layers and it can be a clipping mask. But we only want to draw on this piece. So what we're going to do is go back to this layer on our layer menu with our piece on it, click on it and click select, turn off color fill. You should see diagonal lines all over and it should have went back to your darker orange color. Diagonal lines all on the outside of it. 
Then we're just simply going to go to our layer menu, switch to our new layer, grab our brush. It should still have all the diagonal lines. And then we are just going to start drawing on the left side here, right where the top meets our horizontal line. We're going to start there. We're going to draw kind of like a curved line. And you can see we're only drawing within our piece. So even if I start drawing out here, it doesn't draw out there. It only draws within our piece here. So then from there, we're just going to keep kind of making curved lines all the way across of varying shapes and sizes, lengths and whatnot, leaving just a little bit of our back piece still showing all the way across till we get to the other end like so. And then we can just kind of draw around the top here, making sure that we're hitting part of our piece all the way around and we're not going all the way outside anymore because it's not drawing there like on a clipping mask. It still draws there. It just kind of clips to the shape below it. But right now we're only drawing within our piece. So make sure you're touching the edge all the way around and then go ahead and fill in the middle part and you should have something like this. So this is our first piece of our tree. While we're here, we're going to draw like some little highlights on it. So let's switch to our third color on the last row. Same everything. We're on the same layer. We still have our selection turned on. So now we're just going to draw some highlights. So I'm just going to start on the left side here, make some nice smooth highlights across the top, kind of following the shape. Then for the second little bump here, I'm going to go in a little bit right at that edge and then make another kind of smooth curvy line to kind of mimic our shape below it then kind of let it just fall off the edge there like so okay now we can click our selection tool to turn that off so this is what we're left with so we have our two pieces our background piece and our top piece and then the trunk is going to go in between it so now we're going to add a couple more of these and then we will move on to our trunk. So we're just going to add our base shape right above this first base shape. So our back darker layer here, find that on your layer menu, add a layer right above it. Go back to our dark color again, the first one on the third row, same brush. And we're just going to go down a little bit here, down into the left from this one and we'll make another smaller kind of one. So let's just first make our horizontal line a good length here like so. Hold down, touch your finger to the screen to make it perfectly horizontal. I'm gonna place it probably right about there. Okay, then we'll do a similar thing. We might make the shape a little different this time. So this last time we did two curves and held them down. This time I might just start on one end and kind of make some smooth waviness like this to, and then connect it to the other side um, a little faster to make it a little smoother. Okay, then go ahead and fill that in, kind of smooth it out anywhere it needs to be, like on the edges here. And then we will go ahead and make our top piece again. So we'll just do the same thing. So we're on this layer already. Let's just click on it and click select. Go back to our layer menu, add a new layer. This is what we'll draw switch to our second color on the last row and we'll just do kind of the same thing so i'll just start on one edge we'll make some curvy lines sometimes i kind of dip lower sometimes i kind of dip higher some of them are smaller some of them are longer just kind of whatever works then again we'll connect across the top making sure that we're touching something the whole way through so we can fill it in. Then we'll grab our third color on the bottom row and make just some highlights across the top in certain sections. So again, just kind of start outside, come in, make your shape, and then kind of just fall off on the other end. Okay. So that is it for that piece of our tree. Let's go ahead and click our selection tool to turn it off. Then we'll make one more small piece down here. So again, on our layer menu, let's go back to our previous darker layer here. Add a new layer right above that. That's where we'll draw our new one. So go back to our darker color, the first one on the last row. Same brush. And we'll just again go a little lower into the right now. 
We don't want to obviously go too far outside of this shape because we don't want to go off the edge. So we'll just kind of start maybe right about halfway here. Make a nice straight horizontal line. Hold it down. Touch your finger to the screen. And we will draw our shape here. So again, this time I might just kind of freehand it. Make it a little kind of fun waviness to it. Maybe kind of a tall one this time. And then go ahead and fill that in. Okay, and then once that's in place, now we can make our top piece. So again, go to our layer menu. This layer we're on, click on it, click select. Add a new layer above it on the layer menu. It's still selected. Grab our second color on the last row. And we'll go in and make our little top piece. And connect it. So that we can fill it in without doing anything else. Let's just switch to our highlight color, third one on the bottom row, and we'll go through and add some good highlights. Like so. Then we'll click our selection tool to turn it off, and this is what we're left with, our three tree pieces. So now we can go ahead and make the trunk. So now on our layer menu, you should have our three back pieces all together here, and then our three top pieces all together here. It's okay if some of them are out of order, but they should just be where we can add a layer in between them, and we'll be above our bottom pieces, but below our top pieces. So that's right where we wanna be. We're going to grab our fourth color on the last row of the color palette, and this is our trunk color. Okay, so for our trunk, we're first just going to start kind of in the middle of this top piece or close to it, maybe a little bit to the left here. And we're going to draw like a straight line down, hold it down till it turns perfectly straight. We want it slightly slanted to the left. So if you touch your finger to the screen, you'll get a perfectly vertical line. We want a little bit to the left of that, like so. Then we'll start a little bit to the right at the top, do the same thing and go in the other direction this time. So to the right. So this is perfectly vertical. We want it just a slightly to the right. So it's a little wider at the bottom. Try to make it close to the length of this first piece so that we can connect these here with a perfectly straight line. Hold it down. Touch your finger to the screen to make it perfectly horizontal if you would like to. If that connects your lines nicely, great. If not, it can be tight, slightly slanted at the bottom as well. Let's go ahead and connect it at the top so that we can fill in this big section here. So this is the start to our tree trunk. I might make it a little skinnier. So with my arrow tool on freeform, I might make it just a little skinnier left to right. Okay, and then, cause I just kinda wanna add some more movement to it so it's not so straight. So I might just kinda go through and add some little kinda just freeform pieces to just kinda make the shape not so perfect the whole way through like so. Then from here at the top, we're going to make a couple branches to kind of hold up the other pieces of our tree. So I'm just going to start a little bit down from the top and just kind of make a branch like this. Again, I'll make it kind of thinner at the top and then I'll just kind of go through and thicken it up at the base, kind of make it like smooth into our tree here like so. Okay, we'll do the same thing on the left side here to kind of hold up this piece of our tree maybe even another branch off of that one. Okay, then we also need one under this right mouse piece. So we'll make like another big branch coming off the side of the tree and going over here with a couple branches off of it as well. And then again, we'll kind of thicken it up at the bottom here where it connects to our tree. Okay. So then we'll kind of do a similar thing for the rest of these. So for my left one here, I'll make like a nice big branch coming off. Again, picking it up at the base and kind of like help it meld to my tree a little bit better. Then we'll have some branches coming off of it. like so. Okay, and then same for my right little piece here. 
Okay, and then this top piece is just a little too close to my trunk, as you can see. I don't want it overlapping like this, so I'm going to go and find those two layers. So my closest layer right here is my base, and then this one right here is my top, so I'll slide right on it to select it. Also, when you click your arrow tool, you should see both of them highlighted. If you need to move yours at all, maybe you don't. I might even just, like, downsize it a little bit so that it's just kind of right here, like so. Okay, then I'll go back to my tree trunk layer and make my branches for it. So I'll kind of start here. I'm going to end up extending my tree trunk a little further. It's a little too close here. We, you know, branches don't come off of your tree trunk this close to the ground, but they need to for this one. So we're going to just kind of adjust that in a second. But let's go ahead and get our branch to come through here. Maybe something like this. Maybe just one more coming off the side here, like so. Okay, so yes, let's go ahead and extend our tree trunk a little bit. On both sides, kind of, again, like going out a little further um, on the bottom, so it's a little bit wider there. Go ahead and fill all that in, like so. So that is our tree. Okay, so now that that's all done, I just want my orange pieces to all be like a little bit bigger, maybe some of them anyway, like this left one. So I'm going to go to my layer menu and find those two pieces. So it's this piece here, and then I'll slide right on this piece here to select it. Arrow tool on uniform. I might just make the whole thing a little bigger and then just kind of replace it there. So it's still covering up my branches like so. And then same thing for my top pieces as well. They're just a little small. So I'm just going to increase their size a little bit. Just so they take up a little bit more room. I might even switch it to freeform and just extend them like vertically. Make it a little taller. And then kind of just, yeah, make sure they're still covering my branches nicely. Adjust your branches if you need to as well. Okay, that looks better. So now we'll go to our layer menu and find all of our tree layers and put them all in a group. So I'll start on my topmost tree layer here, slide right on all the rest of them to select them as well. Hit group, and now they're all together. So then when we have this group selected at the top, we can just click our arrow tool on uniform or freeform, and we can downsize it, we can move it around, kind of whatever. So I'm going to kind of place mine right here so it's um, the top of it is close to the top of my canvas. Just kind of right on the right side here. So adjust yours if you need to. You can do it on freeform too if you want to make it skinnier or taller or whatever. The bottom of my trunk here is just kind of a good ways from the bottom of my canvas. So it's not too long here. So something about like this. And then also in completing my tree, it looks like my ground is a little bit too high on my canvas. The angle that we're looking at it on, it shouldn't be halfway through our tree. It should be maybe like a quarter of the way through our tree. So I'm going to go back to my layer menu, click on my ground layer, arrow tool, and just decrease this on freeform down a little bit. So now that our tree's kind of placed where we want it, now I can kind of see that this is definitely a little too tall. So maybe about like this is better. Okay. Then our clouds, we'll do the same thing. So our cloud layer, let's find that. I'm going to click my arrow tool and we can either extend them down a little bit or you can drag the whole layer down, whatever works. I'll kind of do a little mixture of both to make sure those are sitting under my horizon line all the way across. Now we can make our next tree. So that's in the background here. So it's going to be the same exact tree. We're just going to flip it and decrease the saturation. So now that all of our tree layers are done, we can save some layers by flattening this group. So on our group here, we'll click on it and click flatten. And now we just have one big tree shape all on one layer, not a group of layers anymore. We're going to slide to the left and hit duplicate. Grab the one that's on the bottom. Click our arrow tool. First, we'll click flip horizontal. Make sure we're on uniform. We'll downsize it a good amount and place it back here. And we're also actually going to move it below our um, horizon line. So I'm just gonna kinda downsize the whole thing, place it about here, and then on our layer menu, drag it below our ground layer. So right above our sky and our clouds, 
So now it's just kind of more in the background there. And then to make it look even more in the background, we're going to change the saturation of it. So click our wand icon, hue saturation brightness, and we'll drop the saturation a good amount to maybe 43% or so, 43 to 45% somewhere in there. We'll also increase the brightness just a teeny bit to maybe like 52%, 53 at the most. I'll set mine to 52 just to kind of make it look a little lighter and a little further away. Okay, so saturation at 43, brightness at 52, then we can click our wand tool to turn that off. So that just kind of helps make it look a little bit more faded back there and more in the background. Okay, now we're going to make the gazelle in the front. So let's just go to our layer menu, add a new layer at the very, very top. Grab our first next color that we're working with here, which is going to be the fifth one on the last row. So all these next colors will be all of our gazelle colors. So the fifth one on the last row will be our base color for most things. Same monoline brush at 50%. And first, let's just go ahead and make its body and its front legs and its neck. Those will all be on one layer. The head will be on a separate layer. The back legs will be on a separate layer. So first for its body, I'm just gonna kind of start over here in this general area, make a good kind of long oval like so, hold it down until it turns nice and smooth. You can click edit at the top if you need to, to kind of adjust it size-wise or anything. Want it kind of long and skinnier like so, with enough room to make some nice long legs below it, a little tail and its neck and head. So maybe right about here is good. And I'm going to go ahead and fill it in. I'm going to start on the back side here and make the back leg. So this will be its back side. So I'm just going to kind of come off the oval here, kind of go down like so. Nothing too perfect. I'm not holding it down or anything. Then I'll start a little ways away and kind of make the same thing, kind of curving in to make it skinnier on the bottom, wider on the top. So let's go ahead and fill that in since it went off the screen there. Smooth anything out if you need to. Pretty simple. I think I want it to be a little bit taller and longer though. So I'm going to grab my arrow tool on uniform, downsize the whole thing a little bit and kind of drag it up like so. And then I will just continue on with my legs down here. Maybe use my eraser tool to just kind of help get it to be a little skinnier at the bottom. Okay, that looks a little bit better for what I'm going for. Then this will be the front side. So I'm going to come off the front side in a little bit and then go down again to make this front leg. So then same thing on the other side, kind of slight curve at the top and then come in to make it skinnier at the bottom and then fill that all in like so. Okay, then it's neck. So that will just come right off the back side here. So it'll swoop down maybe just the teeniest bit and then we'll just kind of go straight back up, kind of curve there and then kind of straighten it out, make it nice and long. And then over a bit and kind of start there. And then this should line up hopefully kind of with the front of your body. Just kind of work that in there like so. Good long neck. I'll cut it off at the top and then fill it in. Smooth it out with either your pen or your eraser. Pretty similar in length all the way up. Maybe just the teeniest bit skinnier towards the top. Like so. And then lastly, for this layer, we will just add the tail on the back. So on the back side here, I'll just make a little kind of nub of a tail sticking off right there. Okay, then we can do any more adjusting. So his head will be right here. It'll have some big ears on it. So it's okay for him to take up a good amount of room. I think it, I maybe just made it a teeny bit too tall, but I kind of like the shape of it all. So I'm just going to grab my arrow tool on free form and I'm just going to drag it down just the teeniest bit like from top to bottom maybe even widen it a little bit 
maybe just barely, like a little bit just like that. So it's still pretty tall. Okay, do any more adjusting? I might kind of adjust his back a little bit here to make the curve a little bit better. I might make his back a little bit taller. Okay, but otherwise that looks really good. Very, very simple start. Now let's add the back legs. That will be pretty easy. So we'll go to our layer menu, add a new layer, drag it below the layer that we just created. Grab this next color in line, the sixth one on the bottom row. And we will first just make the back leg here. So just kind of off of where this first like front back leg ends. We'll just kind of start right there. Maybe make a tiny little like bend in it. And again, thicker at the top, skinnier at the bottom, connect it on the top and fill it in. And then same thing on the front. We'll kind of just come off the front side here, make a slight bend, a little bit better than that. Same thing, thicker at the top, skinnier at the bottom, connect it and fill it in. Then make any other adjustments. I might go in with my eraser tool on this one to kind of really skinny it up and get like a sharper, like kind of knee joint there. Maybe the same thing back here. Okay, and then that's literally it for these back legs. They're just kind of darker and in shadow. So now we'll move on to the head. So for our head, we will go to our layer menu, add a new layer on top of everything. Go back to our base color again, the fifth one on the last row. Same monoline brush and everything. Okay, and for the head, we're just gonna start at the top of the neck here, make a circle shape to start. So hold it down, touch your finger to the screen to make a perfect circle. Okay, let's go ahead and place that on the top of the neck there, starting pretty small, and then we're going to adjust it a little. So on the top, I'm just going to kind of make it almost like a rounded triangle. So on the top, I'm just going to kind of go out and to the left and just kind of round that into more of a shape like that on that side. Same thing on this side. Just kind of widen it at the top there in a nice round way, though. Kind of still round it on the top. Okay, and then that's literally it for the head. So make any other adjustments, smooth it out, all that good stuff but we're gonna leave it like rounded on the bottom where we drew our circle. Okay, then we're just gonna add the ears. So for the right ear here, I'm going to start right where this like kind of corner is that I just created. I will make a curved line going up this way, hold it down, another like bigger curve going this way. I'm not gonna hold that one down. Started a little straighter, had a big curve in it. Just gonna fill that in. Then a similar thing on the left side here, just maybe at a slightly different angle. I'm just going to start with kind of a curve going this way, hold that down. And then again, like a bigger curve coming back like that. Maybe not quite that big, something like that. Go ahead and fill that in. Make sure they look kind of similar. I think this one could be a little bit bigger. So I'm just gonna extend it a little bit on both sides. Kind of keeping that same shape. So something like that looks good. Now we can add all of the details. So we'll add some highlights and shadows and then some just kind of more details like the back with the little spots on it and its face and whatnot. So let's go back to our body layer and add everything there first. So our bottom most legs will leave completely alone. They have nothing, they get nothing added to them. On our body layer though, let's go to that layer, click on it and set it to alpha lock so that we only draw on this shape. Grab the seventh color on the bottom row, slightly lighter than the one that we used for our legs but slightly darker than our base color. And same monoline brush, and we're just going to add this little patch to his back. So I'm just going to kind of start close to his tail, make kind of like a wavy little line like this going across his back and then up to its neck, and then fill that in. Then we'll add the spots to it. That is going to be with this slightly lighter color right next to it, the eighth one on the bottom row. Same monoline brush at 50%, and I'm just going to go through and kind of add some random little spots of varying kind of shapes and sizes. They're not perfect, I'm not holding anything down. Some of them are just kind of blobbish. Some of them are smaller, some of them are bigger. 
you know, just kind of all across its back there. Okay, and then we'll also add some highlights and shadows to it. So the shadow is going to be with the same color that we just used for our patch, the darker color. So let's go back to that color, the seventh one on the bottom row. And then we're going to just kind of zoom in on his belly here and add a shadow. So I'm going to start right on the front of his belly, kind of add a shadow following the shape of our belly. And then when we get to the leg area here, this back leg area, it's just going to kind of curve up a little bit like so to kind of create like a little crevice where that leg is. Okay, then we're going to create a shadow under its head. So we'll just kind of start drawing here, right where the head ends. And we'll kind of be able to see that since those are the same color, it's kind of hard to see. But once you start drawing, since the head layer is on top of this, you'll see kind of where that ends. And then we'll just create kind of like a slightly curved line going down this way to create a nice shadow there. Okay, and then we are going to add a highlight to it. Okay, so the highlight is going to be with this seventh color on the second row of the color palette. So that one I couldn't keep in my group here, so I just put it right above there. So we're going to use that color to just kind of create a highlight kind of on the front of his body here, just right along the front side there. And that is pretty much it. And then that is it for our body. So we'll use this again in a second when we do his ears, but otherwise the body is all done. Very simple there. Okay, so now we're going to add everything to our head layer. And first things first, I noticed my head looks a little small and I do want it to be kind of small. I think it looks cute, but I'm gonna make it just the teeniest bit bigger. So I'm going to be on my head layer now, arrow tool on uniform, drag it up just a little bit and just kind of make sure to replace it there on the top of the neck like so. So just a little bit bigger, it looks good. Then we'll go to our layer menu, click on this layer, set it to alpha lock. And now we will make everything else. So let's first start with his ears. So the ears are going to be the really dark color that we used for his back legs. So that is the sixth one on the bottom row. Same monoline brush. We can decrease the size probably a little bit now to like 30%. And I am just going to kind of on the inside of his ears, just create like a very similar shape leaving a little of the outside ear part showing like so all the way around and then fill that in smooth it out same thing on the other side like so Okay, next up we'll make his snout. So that's going to be first with this lightest color on our bottom row, the ninth one in line. And this is how we will create the initial snout shape. So I'm just going to start on the left. So I'm just going to start on the left of the center on the bottom here. So right here outside my shape a little bit. And I'm just going to draw a nice curved line up and back down, hold it down until it turns perfectly smooth. Edit it if we need to so that it's kind of matches up on both sides. And we want it to be about halfway through his face at the top here like so, and then yeah, a good amount on the left and right side covered. And then we will fill in everything in the middle here. Fill in any little ghosty lines that you have just with your pen. On top of this, we will draw his nose. So the nose is going to be with the sixth color again on the bottom row that we just used for the inner ears. And we are just going to simply create a nose shape on the center top part here not touching the edges so leaving a little bit of room there but it's just going to be kind of like a rounded triangle shape like so and then with a small line coming down out of it so i'm going to decrease my size of my brush quite a bit to like five percent and we're just going to have a small line that comes out of it and goes all the way to the bottom you could stop it a little short too if you want to and just have it kind of just and like in the middle there, I kind of like the way that looks as well. I think I will leave it just shorter. Now we're going to create a little dark mark on the top of his head. So that's going to be with our seventh color on the bottom row, slightly lighter than the one that we just used for the nose, but slightly darker than the base color. We'll increase our brush again to 30% and we'll make a very similar thing that we just did on this like light part here for the snout, we're just going to do the same thing on the head. So from one ear to the other, I'm just gonna start outside, make a curved line, 
hold it down until it turns perfectly smooth, and then we can adjust it by clicking the arc button on the top. Just kind of make sure it looks nice and smooth all the way throughout, and then go ahead and fill it in. And then I had the teeniest little bit that kind of went over on my ear here, so I'm just gonna fix that with my brush there. Okay, but that's the little mark on top of his head, and then we just need the eyes. So for the eyes, we're going to grab the last color on the last row, the darkest one. Same brush at 30%, and we are just going to make a circle shape here for the eyes. Hold it down, touch your finger to the screen, set it to a good size, and just kind of right here to the upper right side of our nose. Nice big wide eyes, and then we'll do the same thing on the other side. So circle shape, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen. Try to match the size and placement as best as you can. And fill them both in. And then we just need to add a little twinkle to them. And that's going to be with this lightest color on the bottom row, the ninth one in line. Let's drop our brush to like 10%, and I will just make a little dot on the top right of each of the eyes. I might want them a little bit bigger. Let's do 20%. Okay, that looks better. And then lastly, we just need a little bit of a highlight on his ears. So we will use our highlight color again, this seventh one on the second row, so the, kind, the one that's kind of on the other line. And we will just add a little bit of highlight to the tops of his ears, staying just in this like base color, not going into the darker part if you can help it. Just kind of on both sides, following the shapes of his ears. There. Okay. So then that completes our gazelle. So make any other adjustments if you need to. Um, I might, again, make my head just a little bit bigger. I still feel like it looks a little strange, so I'm just going to increase the size on uniform and make sure it's placed there nicely on the top of his neck so we can still see our shadow and everything. But that looks a little bit better. Okay, and then we're just going to add some finishing touches here. So the first finishing touch is to add some kind of streaks through our ground in the background just to kind of make it look more dynamic and stuff. And so to do that, we are going to go to our layer menu, add a layer right above our ground layer. Click on that layer and set it to a clipping mask so we only draw within our ground shape. Click the N on that layer and drag the style up to overlay. And we are going to use the fourth color on the second row for this. We're going to switch our brush this time to the Studio Pen under the Inking category. We're going to set the size pretty high to like 70%. And we are just going to draw some streaks through the background. So to do that, we're just going to, to draw lines really fast, pushing down hard at first and then letting it gradually let up. So like this to draw a nice um, streak like that. I want them all to be very like straight though and it's harder for me to draw horizontally, so I'm gonna turn my canvas vertically and do it this way, so then I just feel like I get a better point. And they don't all have to be in the same direction, so they can kind of go off in kind of whatever. We can make some really thin ones by pushing really lightly, just kind of in the middle, and then yeah, some thicker ones coming off the edge or just kind of wherever. Just kind of some lines all through the background there like that. And then with the layer set as it is, it's a little bit too bright for me. So I'm just going to go to my layer menu, click the O on this layer to open up the menu and just drag the opacity down a good amount to maybe like 70%. So we just get some kind of light texture there in the background. Okay, and then one more quick thing to kind of help out our ground is to add a shadow under our tree. So to do that, we will go to our layer menu, add another new layer right above the one that we were just on. Click the N on the layer this time and drag it up to multiply. We didn't set it to a clipping mask or anything. And then we're going to grab the fifth color on the top row. That is the color we will use for this. We'll switch our brush back to the monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. 
set to like 50%. And we're just going to start kind of behind the tree trunk here. And I'm just going to kind of make a little blob that just kind of looks like it would kind of match our tree a little bit. Make sure it's connected at the back and then fill it in. So just kind of something like this to be our shadow. So again, just kind of adjust it if you need to at all. I might just widen it a little bit on free form, just a teeny bit. Okay, so just place that there nicely. And then very, very lastly is to add the little grass or wheat growing in the front of our picture. So to do that, we will go to our layer menu, add a layer at the very, very top of everything, just a normal layer style. We'll grab the fourth color on the top row of our color palette, this really light yellow color. And we will again switch back to our studio pen under the inking category at about 70%. And similarly, we're just going to push and make these like blades of wheat. We're going to kind of make them really tall. But yeah, just push hard at the base and then let up quickly to get a nice taper on the ends. And I'm just kind of drawing them, just kind of scattering them. You know, some shorter, some taller, some kind of grouped together, some not. Some can even like overlap each other. We just want them really tall in the front, maybe not quite to our um, gazelle's face, but still pretty tall in general. All the way across the bottom of the screen. Yes, yeah, some at different angles is good, some pretty thin ones. Just kind of something like this. Okay, and then once you are done with that, if you feel like they're too short, you, you can always adjust them by just clicking the arrow tool on Freeform and dragging them up or down. If yours even got too tall, that's possible too. You could just drag them down a little bit, kind of whatever works to finish off your picture. But that being said, that is the final step to complete our drawing today. So I hope you had fun. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more tutorials for me in the future. If you want to check out my Patreon for extra tutorials, again, I have that linked in the description below. So feel free to check that out and join us over there. If you would like to share your drawing on Instagram, I would love to see it. So go ahead and post it and then tag me so that I can check it out. While you're there, go ahead and give me a follow so that you can see what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching.